How about next week? Well, it begins with a silly argument about this hat. And it ends when two people in peril, miles apart, discover an amazing kind of communication, an incredible way of finding each other, as together they take that one step beyond. The amazing drama you're about to see is a matter of human record. You may believe it or not, but the real people who lived this story, they believe it, they know. They took that one step beyond. How many ways are there for human beings to communicate with each other? The kiss, the glance, the word, and there's another, an incredible other, which can happen any time, any place, to anybody. To anybody. All you had to do was be nice to him. Seems to me you were nice enough for both of us. Now, what kind of a crack is that? Oh, come on, kiddo. You knew what you were doing every minute. Yes, I knew what I was doing. Uh, you don't have to yell. I'm sitting right here beside you. I was trying to keep you from cutting your own throat. Of course, you're such a successful lawyer. We, we don't need a $2,000 oh, retainer. wait a minute. Oh, no, no, no. We don't have any bills to pay. Our closets are bulging. Oh, now, shut up. And that ridiculous hat. I mean, it's embarrassing. Looks like you bought it at the dime store. That's it. Yeah, that's just fine. I was wondering when you were going to get around to that. Well, I think it's a pretty hat. Oh, isn't that interesting, Mr. Wallace? My, what a fascinating career you've had, Mr. Wallace. And that low-cut dress you insisted on wearing. And what about the way you were dancing with him? You're just jealous. Jealous of a fat old man. And dumb. Oh. Arguing politics with a prospective client. Well, what was I supposed to do? Crawl, yes him to death like you did? Beg him for his business? Look, I don't need anybody that bad. No, of course not. Not a Clarence Darrow like you. the door. Why don't you yell a little louder, then the whole neighborhood can hear you. Maybe I will. You're back just about the time you said you'd be. Uh, Debbie was just fine, Mrs. Jansen. She went to bed at 8.30 sharp without any fuss at all. How much do I owe you, Mrs. Ford? Well, let's see, about four hours. That would be three dollars, I guess. Well, did you have a nice time, Mr. Johnson? Yes. I hope you've asked me again. You know, I enjoyed it so much, and Debbie's such a nice little girl. Well, good night. Good night. Now, I want to tell you something. Don't tell me anything. Despite your rudeness, Mr. Wallace is going to call and have you take on his legal work. Sure he is. Is that the payoff for your dancing with him all night? What else did he whisper in your ear? He didn't whisper anything in my ear. Just so happens I knew what he was thinking. Oh, now we come to the mind reading bit again. You knew what he was thinking. You knew what he was thinking. You know what I'm thinking. You know what everybody's thinking, and I'm sick of it. It seems to me you're getting sick of a lot of things. If you mean watching my wife throwing herself around like a common, low-down cheap... <laughs> Look, I'm... I'm 
Darrow like you. Clarence Darrow. Oh, my God. Carol? Will? Will? Hi, 
I'm sorry, Mommy. But you were still asleep and it was getting late, so I thought I'd better make my own breakfast. And look what happened. It's all right, Tebby. I'll clean it up. Go sit down now. You're going to have to hurry because you're going to be late for school. Where's Daddy? Daddy? Has he gone already? Yes, he had to leave very early. Now, you hurry up and finish this, because you're going to be late. Did I tell you that Laura got a pink sweater set for her birthday? Now, it isn't until Saturday, but she's going to wear it to school today, anyhow. You're not listening. What, dear? About Laura and her birthday. Yes, dear. Am I going to have a birthday party this year, Mommy? We'll talk about it later, Debbie. But it's only three months from now. We have to make plans. What are you and Daddy going to get me for my birthday? I can keep a secret. No, you can't. You're the biggest blabbermouth in town. Now, hurry up and finish your breakfast. you, Mr. Wallace. Oh, of course, I'm not disappointed. I, you, but you did call, just like I said. No, I, of course, I'm surprised. I just meant... Oh, no, Will's not here. He already left for the office. Oh, he's not there? I guess he'll be in real soon. He must have stopped to see a client. If I hear from him, I'll tell him that you called. And that you made up your mind. Yes. Oh, very soon, Mr. Wallace. Thank you. Goodbye. Mrs. Hutchison? 
This is Mrs. Jansen. Yes, good morning. Has Mr. Jansen come in yet? Oh, well, let me speak to Mr. Wesley then, please. George? Will and I had a terrible argument last night and he stormed out. And I haven't seen or heard from him since, have you? Oh. Well, I don't know what to think, where he could be. It was a stupid argument and it was all my fault. But, but it's more than that. I, George, the, the strangest things have been happening to me. I don't know if I'm going out of my mind or what. You know how I always felt I knew what Will was thinking? Well, I keep almost hearing things. I keep feeling that he needs me, that he's calling to me. <laughs> it's not silly. I know something's wrong. Well, what if he's hurt someplace and he needs someone to help him? <laughs> yes, I'll be all right. Yes. All right. Goodbye. Operator, give me the police. Just listen to Mrs. me, please. Mrs. Jansen, I have been listening to you, but really, I think you're getting excited over nothing. I'm not excited. I, I, I'm, I'm just worried, that's all. I, he's been missing since midnight. Well, that's just a little over 10 hours and 40 minutes. Now, that's hardly time enough for you to get so worried, is it? Hasn't this ever happened before? No, he's never done this before. Look, in my house, this kind of thing would... Mrs. Jansen, if we went looking for every married man, the first time he spent a night on the town, there'd be no time for anything else, now, would there? You can understand that, can't you? Uh, I bet he's back at his office right now, or back home, wondering where you are. Now, if you'd like, I'll call him for you. No, he's not in the office. His partner knows I'm here. I, I left a note at home in case he comes back there. All right, Mrs. Jansen. If you were me, where would you start looking? Don't you see? He could be anywhere. He had an accident in the car. Yes, you told me. But where? How do you know? I know. He's hurt, and he's in danger. Somewhere. After you telephoned, we checked the hospitals, we checked the morgue, we double-checked the highway patrol, and all accidents after midnight. There's a description on your husband and his car. Now, if anything happens... But it has happened. It happened last night. He's lying somewhere, hurt. I know it. I, I, I'm sure of it. Mrs. Jansen, now be reasonable, will you? I... Excuse me. Yes. Oh, Sergeant Cooper. Lab reports on that hit and run. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh-huh. Did you double check? Oh. Yeah, I've got it. Diane. Mark. Yeah, yeah. All right, thanks. Landmark? What? Landmark. Landmark what? I don't know. I, I don't know, but I, I know that's where he is. I'm, I'm sure of it. I... All right, Mrs. Jansen, just be calm. I can't beat him, join him. Ah, I'll look it up for you. Oh, here we are. This is Evelyn Landman, Land Maps Incorporated, Landmark Cafe, Landmark Industries. That's it. What's it? Landmark Cafe. Landmark Cafe. Route 55 and Carruthers Road. Lady, that's 10 or 12 miles out of town. Now, that's a pretty long trip to take for no... Oh, all right, all right, Mrs. Jansen. I'll call him for you. I'll call him. Landmark Cafe.
Well, they don't answer. I guess they don't open up this time of the morning. Where are you going? There's no time! Oh, brother, I draw the... I'm coming, Mrs. Jackson. Well, at least it stopped raining. You want to tell me about it now, Mrs. Jansen? What? Why are you so sure your husband will be at this cafe? Uh, I don't know. Oh, come on now. What is it, really? Some waitress that works there, is that it? What? Okay, Mrs. Jansen, okay. There's no one here, Mrs. Jansen. Probably hasn't been anyone near here in weeks. Now, let's get back to the car. No, I, I know. There's, there's I, no one I here, know. Mrs. Jansen. Really? I, Francis. I know. I, I... I'll take you home now, and if by the time we get there your husband hasn't returned, I'll see that somebody stays with you. When you're on this road, those airplanes seem like they're coming right at you. Jansen, I'll bet you anything in this world that when we get there, you'll find your husband's already there. He's probably got the rest of the police force out looking for you. Mrs. Jansen, don't worry. Exactly where we are. You knew he was there. How? How indeed? How did Carol know? Another, an incredible other kind of human communication. If you must have a word for it, it's called telepathy. And what is telepathy? You're not going to trap me. I'll be back in a moment. This flashlight, held in the hand of a small boy, 
once threw light into a very dark place. It also illuminated one of the most mysterious experiences of life as we know it. Next week, we promise you something startling. Startling, that is, if you believe the dead can return to shield the living.